Let's talk about Postgres in this video. Postgres is a database which we also use at Formion and Codedam, and I want to tell you how we handle thousands of concurrent connections to Postgres with our serverless architecture with Formion. So talking a little bit about Formion first to give you context of the product in general which we are talking about. It's a platform for technical content creators. So let's say if you are somebody like me who's creating content on YouTube, you know, after that you create a few courses, you want to have your own platform where people can practice, do all sorts of things you can use Formion as a platform as a white label system where you get your own subdomain or domain you have an instructor panel where you can create courses you can have a community feature like a slack thing a drop-in replacement for slack or discord these softwares which you have you can have like course bundles custom pages with wordpress all of all of the good stuff right so if you have used something like shopify or even wordpress you can use a system like this now the thing is that every single thing here is a back-end call right so when I go to this courses page, for example, if I refresh this page, you're going to see this shell loads and then there is a loader. This data, it comes from the backend, right? The backend for us in our case is an AWS Lambda instance. Of course, we can switch it to EC2 or something else uh, anytime, but I'll talk a little bit about the architecture that CodeDAM and Fermion follows. So that architecture basically is serverless for the most part, right? So anytime, for example, let's say if I inspect this, go to Networks tab and if I go to this API for example anytime we are refreshing you can see that there are multiple backend calls which are being made to the end server right two backend calls in this specific case so how does this work how do we scale it to many many thousands of connections users so first of all let's try to understand what's happening here so first things first Formion as a platform is a platform to build your own courses content etc etc right so there are two sort of providers for two sort of users for this right the end user who has purchased something so for example this is an end user who bought a course from a creator or someone and the second type of user is the instructor itself instructor himself or herself right so for example if i am on one of these websites like algo prep for example which is one of the websites that uses fermion for algo prep x right so if i go to this website and if i enroll it i would be sort of like a user right so if i buy this access for example this page is not set up you can have description and all of that here but by when you buy this all of this you get access to the content and every single thing every small interaction over here is a backend call so if you go back to this page this loader is a backend call this notification is a backend call and so on so you can imagine like once you get a lot of traffic on the website this backend becomes very very you would say busy in a way right so what happens is that the end users and instructors both are on Formion, you know as a platform and then this Formion as a platform However, it works on a white label fashion, so we'll not discuss that. So this white labels it to any other domain. So for example, let's say if this is Acme, not Acme, let's just say, let's just say any other domain, XYZ. So let's say XYZ.com is a school that is using Fermion. So it white labels it first, and then XYZ.com starts to dispatch calls to our backend, right? To the shared backend. In fact, the front end is also shared, but it's white labeled. Backend is also shared. So how backend works is that this right here is an AWS Lambda, right? Now this Lambda, it can scale up, scale down, scale out, I would say, not even scale up because it has like a certain size, size plus, uh, you know, CPU plus RAM, whatever, right? So it has like certain metrics. Now what happens, the next thing is that this AWS Lambda needs to connect with Postgres. So you need a Postgres database over here, among other things, right? So if we have like Redis and all of that. So it's, it's there, but you need to connect to a certain database because all the user data, for example, all the information is controlled there. So this Postgres instance, what happens is that once people start calling backend multiple times, AWS will try to scale out the Lambda, right? So it will create another Lambda instance. It will then create another Lambda instance. It will then create another Lambda instance and so on, right? So it will just it'll just keep on creating these little little lambda instances and before you know problem starts to happen because I'll, I'll tell you what happens so you have something like this which is like a shared thing all together right so you have something like this as an architecture where formio.app serves the front end it calls the back end and then you have aws lambdas which is like continuously hitting the postgres server right so all of these little lambda instances they are directly hitting your postgres server now what happens is that lambda itself requires a little bit of pooling of connections because the reason for that is that 
every single lambda, for example, what it does, every single lambda makes maybe tens of queries in a given request, right? A lot of them can be parallel. So if you suffocate one lambda to one TCP connection with Postgres, what you will not be able to do is these parallel connections. So usually what happens is that each lambda spins up a pool of five to six connections itself to Postgres. Now the reason for this is because this lambda then can use like five or six parallel queries, independent queries together, right? Without affecting the performance. If you just restrict it to one, what's going to happen is that you will only be able to run one query at a given time, not even transaction, just one single query, right? So you need that. And the problem now happens is that once you have like five to six connections per Lambda, your connection count starts to increase. So if you have just 20 concurrent Lambdas, you are effectively connecting to 100 connections. You have effectively 100 connections. And the thing with our architecture, the way we have created this is that we say, that we don't want to spin down the lambda immediately after the request goes right so what we do is we keep this lambda container around so this stays like for some time without dropping the tcp connections and all the reason for that is because our backend is very busy right like i said if a few people are even browsing it will just start creating a lot of backend requests so chances are if that's if one container has already spun up it would receive a few more requests in sometime right so there is no point in just tearing down this lambda environment tearing down these tcp connections again because this is an expensive thing right initializing a connection takes time then it's like relatively faster so all of this takes a little bit of time here and there so you just keep these containers around so what's happening is that you are creating a lot of lambdas with a lot of ghost connections right so these connections are not used a lot and they block on the postgres side Right? So Postgres as a database, it does not support infinite connections. So this has a limit. It has a limit on limit on number of connections. And the limit depends on the, you know, the configuration which you have, but we, because we use RDS, for example, right now, AWS RDS, if we use that, then our limit is based on a configurable connection, but it's also a function of connection limit is a function of your CPU plus RAM of the database, basically, right? So you cannot like have infinite connections. You have to create, you know, just scale up your instance a lot and this becomes problematic right because as you increase your postgres size the cost increases exponentially like bigger instances are very very expensive for postgres and plus for the most part what you will realize is that all of these lambdas after some time like let's say if there's a surge of requests right so aws will quickly spin up like 100 lambda connections these 100 lambda connections would create 500 lambda TCP connections to Postgres. And after that, like after one minute has passed, we need to scale it down also, but AWS would not do that, right? There's scale down algorithm, even though it doesn't charge us for that, but it can kick in any time, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, AWS does not share that. So we are effectively blocking a lot of connections over here from Postgres, right? So if a new Lambda, let's say for whatever reason, if a new Lambda is required at that time, or if an old Lambda tries to use it, it would be blocked, right? It would not be able to create new connections and your performance would degrade everything would go to hell and in fact if you have like a limit on the number of connections it can accept even though that connection is not doing a lot right it's not like we are executing a lot of transactions it might as well be just a read query now you might say like you can connect to read replica and so on so those are optimizations sure but at our scale we don't need those optimizations we just need to optimize the actual connections thing connection pooling basically we need that so how it works is exactly like that, like I mentioned. So we introduce, instead of Postgres directly, we introduce something known as a bouncer or a connection pooler, right? So what this does basically is that this right here is an EC2 instance. So this over here is an EC2 instance. It's not a database, right? But it acts like a database. What it does is that the only thing it does is that it transparently passes and maintains the connections with Postgres. So Postgres over here stays as a stateful thing. This EC2 instance stays as a WebSocket handling thing as a one single instance. And this over here is how we communicate with Postgres now, right? So the there are advantages. I'm not saying that this architecture itself is like infinitely scalable. There are advantages. There are disadvantages also. The number one advantage here is that it can scale easily to thousands or even tens of thousands of connections, right? Because remember that these tens of thousands of Postgres connections are created on this side, not on this side, right? 
what we can do is we can limit this to maximum max 500 connections so what's it's going to do is that this pooler will maintain 500 tcp connections every time with postgres right so imagine like 500 lines going over here to here so it has like a 500 you can say an express highway connection with postgres and over here this is the mess which it handles right so this because this is also a compute layer it's not a database at all so it can like do a few more interesting things so what it does is that it accepts every single tcp connection whatever is required whenever it is needed and it hands it over one of these 500 express highways and once the query is finished it takes away that connection so it has a few modes let me just tell you what those modes are so you see these are the three modes which this pooling which this pooler supports a session pooling a transaction pooling and a statement pooling right so session pooling is a mode which postgres like if you imagine like how what the problem for us with postgres was that is the same thing here in session pooling also when a client connects the server connection will be assigned for the whole duration it stays connected when the client disconnects the server connection will be put back into pool this mode supports all postgres features right this is how exactly postgres also works however this is the problem we are trying to avoid because the problem we are avoiding is that these AWS Lambda little instances they just keep on holding that connection with Postgres as a database so other person other client who wants to use that connection for something they can't do that the next mode in which we operate is the transaction pooling we operate at Fermion we operate it in a transaction pooling mode so how this works is that even though this client is connected it's happy okay i have a connection i have a websocket connection with postgres it's actually not right so there is a split over here somewhere right so there is a line over here which maintains so the, the websocket stays connected or whatever like the tcp stays connected the connection but not really right because what PG Bouncer does is that it swaps those connections, those pipes all the time, right? So this TCP connection, this is a pipe one, for example, this is coming in. There is, there are like a 500 high, you know, high net worth or high important pipes over here with Postgres, which is the actual useful thing. And it can swap the pipes based on if you are using it or not. So if you're not using it, it'll just keep it there. So it'll keep like tens of thousands of Postgres connections connected to itself. The moment you need to run an SQL query, the SQL query, there is a request for example select one from whatever the moment this request comes in what it does is that it connects it in the transaction mode it connects a pipe it takes a pipe from here it connects it from here it runs the transaction it lets the result go back and it disconnects it again so this it makes it this highway again free for the next query so what this does is that let's say if you have many many queries coming in together right it will try to allocate all of those queries a certain connection and even if like you run out of connections it can do a little bit of queuing or handling of those connections itself traditionally what would happen is that if you just try to keep on opening a single database connection on every request you will eventually suffocate your database and it'll start to return error which precisely is that you know further connections are reserved for replica admins or something like that like we have seen that in, in production and in staging so that happens and the when that happens your database is basically non-responsive right so it won't be able to respond to any new clients your website might be functional for some people might not be functional for other people so it's a mess position to be in so what you do here is that you restrict it to a highway of 500 connections you maintain the whole pool over here and you let the pg bouncer do the magic of just connecting these pipes together and you know just making sure that nothing goes down this is an amazing solution for having the best of both worlds in terms of serverless compute otherwise what you would have to do is that you would have to create a beefier backend so this is an ec2 instance that handles like you know 500 or that creates a pool which basically does the same thing so your ec2 as a backend becomes a pooler so instead of that what you do is that you connect it with a lambda it becomes a slightly complex architecture with a single point of failure also i mean unless you have like multiple bounces in place but it's a reasonable trade-off for a company of our size for example where we want stability a little bit more over you know just randomly the database going down by just directly connecting it earlier we used to do that so earlier i mean as it's very recent thing like we did it like a few months back itself so up to up to last year what you would have seen is that this postgres connected directly with the backend and of course like it increases rds cost increases your bill it increases your headache because you are running a very powerful machine only for 
are maintaining connections in the serverless world, even though you are not using them all the time. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. That is how Fermion in general works. That is how the backend technology in general works. We have a lot of interesting things we do on Fermion. So if you are a content creator, if you're somebody who's trying to create and sell content, do check it out. We have a very solid architecture, as you can see. So we take care of all of these things so that you don't have to, because if you go ahead and create your own thing, if you go ahead and create your own website, which you are most welcome to do, but when you do that, you will run into all of these problems at scale. This is not a problem that happens on, of course, you can create a sizable business of like a few hundred students. But once you create a business where, you know, you have a blog or you have public traffic coming in, or if you have something like, you know, a free account registration or something like that, you will run into architectural problems as you grow as a creator also. So that's the idea behind Fermion that how do we help you as a content creator or as a business manage your tech and manage your operations completely and you figure out what do you want to sell? How do you want to price? What sort of payment you want to accept? If it's a partial payment, for example, if, an, if it is an EMI based plan, what payment gateways you want, what currencies you want to support, all of the good things about a business, right? Not none of the boring technical stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you liked and learned something from it. I'm going to see you in the next one really soon.